welcome to Chewing the Cud. Hello, you cutesy wootsy eagle monsters out there in the real world. We're stuck living out our fantasy lives in your telly boxes. You do know each time you turn your TVs off, we die a little, don't you? So stay tuned for another episode of Chewing the Cud. Here we are, ready to bombard you with brilliant showbiz news, slap you with a collection of things from the internet, and also showing something educational. That's science, that is. But before we straddle that monster, let's speak to the man who's been known to str Actually, it was just Mike. Been known to straddle a few things. Horses. How else did you get out of a horse, Lee? I don't know, Mike. I've been pushing my face right into the cleft and going <laughs> and finding some fun bits from the internet, including something a little bit saucy. And I have some hot showbiz news, including something you may be dreading, and it involves a b-boy. Oh. And you can always find us while you wait for the quick wash on your delicates. Just look on social media for at the Cud TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And if you want to listen to us do this show as a podcast or watch us on YouTube, have a search for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. That's right. Ding the bell. Hello, Mike. You're my old friend. I'm back on screen with you again. Like a vision dressed in sequins that someone dreamt while he was sleeping. And the vision exploded onto the set with no regrets. Just the jangle of brooches. In satin cape I walked alone, moonlight glint on new rhinestone, neath the halo of a street lamp, rainbow collar looking so gay in camp, when my eyes were stabbed by the flash of a glittered cuff, and tinsel rough and the jangle of brooches. And the sound man let out a groan, your brooch just knocked the microphone, and it's rubbing on the collar cloth, well put the viewers off. People at home just want to hear your voice, now there's their choice not the jangle of brooches. Fool, said I, you do not know. I'm addicted to these shows and the sparkles that I bring you, the colored badges that I cling to. In my words, like muffled mumbles fell, like down a well, it must be the jangle of brooches. The producer said, please don't wear green or it will mess with the green screen. I implore you heed this warning when you are on the set performing, or your head, like a puppet on a pole, will partially appear and will look queer with disembodied brooch. But following on from that thought, I need to know, what's the difference between a turtle and a tortoise? Tortoises are the clump clump, turtles are the flip flip. That's a new action. Let's just play. Game of the Week. The producer can't be with us today as he's planning a wedding to the man of his dreams. He said it's a July wedding. He's got all the invites out, the venue is prepared, catering is sorted. The only issue is he's been single for five years and hadn't found the man to marry. Now I've seen his grinder profile so I can see why. Actually, I'm not sure if that's sad or I should call the police. This week, we're playing straight acting, which we know will stretch Mike to the full. So off you go, Mike, to our performance area and let's see if we can coax out your inner thespian. You want me to stretch and coax out my inner mm, thespian? Okay. Tease it out with some ham. <laughs> While Mike does his vocal warm-up exercises, I'll explain the game. Our brand new state-of-the-art artificial intelligence quantum computer will generate some random scenes and all Mike has to do is adequately portray the essence of the piece so that I can guess what the heck it's about. Are you ready, Mike? I'm, I'm slightly supple and ready. I have stretched my innards ready. <laughs> Is it your like weird role-playing horse cum face? Not horse cum face. <laughs> horse cum face. Uh, <laughs> you a horse. What am I doing now? Uh, I've not got to the end, so... Uh, oh, I didn't win. I get shot. Are you a horse from the Grand National? I am a horse in the Grand National. Not all horses get shot, though. No, just the ones that don't win. <laughs> okay, the next one. Okay. Oh, you look chilly. Cuddle me. Cuddle me and look chilly. To your chat up line? No, no. 
You look like, ooh, is your back hurting? Hold me against your back if your back's sore. Are you a hot water bottle? I am a hot water bottle, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I go, oh, you're cold, hold me. No idea. You look like you've got a sore back. Hot water bottle straight yeah, off. Yeah, <laughs> it's scoliosis. I need it for my, yeah, that's what it's done, yeah. <laughs> you ready for the next one? I am. Okay. Pleased. Hurry! I'm going to say Scooby-Doo, man. <laughs> Scooby-Doo, yeah. Very good. I love my Scooby-Doo impression. Ooh. Ooh. Mmm. Ooh, that's so, so sensual. Ooh. Are you limbering your f***ing hand up ready for a session? No, because I'm right-handed. Well, you know, it's nice to switch it up. No, because the other one's in use already. Okay. We've got a cup in there. No, um... Ooh, ooh, it's just this particular bit here. Mmm, ooh. What are you doing? Uh, what, what is this? A, a, a cough, a right. coof. Okay, it's a coof, okay. Oh, uh, what, what reaction is the coof having on me? Sexual, sexual coof. <laughs> is that a band? <laughs> No, I'm being turned on by cuffs. Oh, okay. I prefer sexual coof for the band. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready for the next one? Are you man? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's all around me. It's all around me. I'm scared. I'm so scared. It's everywhere. Ectoplasm. No. Oh, it's just come out of me. It's going inside me as well. Oh, it's coming out of me. It's coming inside of me. What do I do? It's coming inside of me, going outside of me. Oh, no. I don't know. <laughs> Scared by air. Scared by air. Scared by air. Oh, okay. Okay, next one. Okay. Yeah. I want to drink your blood. Count Dracula. Indeed, Count Dracula. This is the level we need to be going for. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Ah! F***ing hell! <laughs> Is it a shitty seat? No, it's not. No, it's not. No. No. Um. Ah! Are you scared? No. What am I doing? Screaming. Shorten it. Scream. Yeah, I'm the film Scream. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Doodly doodly do, do 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 diddly do 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 diddly doodly do 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 do. It's a song about me. Nelly the elephant. I'm Nelly the elephant, yeah. I'm a little bit of hair, but not for up here. I'm a hair for down there. You arse hair? No. Pubic hair? Not quite. I'm a little bit of hair. You can buy me. Okay, so I'm not your hair. You've had to buy me for your hair down there. Is it a pubic wig? Um, is it a merkin? It is a merkin, yes, well done. I know that the producer has many of those. Yeah, yeah, but for some reason, always wears them on the top of his head. I know, it's very strange. Mm. Okay. I'm a musical group. Okay. I gather no must. <laughs> The Rolling Who. The, no. the Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stones, yes. The Rolling Who are not a real band. I get them mixed up. And add them together. Yes. I'm on a sandwich. I'm fried and I'm round. And I'm having a party. I'm on a sandwich. I'm fried and I'm round. And I'm having a party. I'm like a tube of meat. Having a party. I don't know, but I'm liking the sound of it. <laughs> is it a hot dog? Mm, sort of. It's a type of. It's a type. A hot dog is a type of thing. That's having the party. Party food. Nibbles. So a very specific kind of party food. You have them with bacon. Tube of meat. A sausage roll. Okay. So a sausage. And there's a group of them all dancing. A sausage party? A sausage party, yes. I don't understand. You don't understand what a sausage party is? No. <laughs> you get it? It's a film, apparently. Is it a, an adult film? No, it's a children's film, which is... The, did you not know? 
It's a children's film, yes. Called Sausage Party. Called Sausage Party, yes. Who's in it? Yeah, you're going to have to watch Sausage Party, Lee. Yeah, just I will, indeed. When you Google it. It's very evening. But, yeah. Um, so we've got time for one more? Bust one out, Mike. Okay. Um, I surrender here. Napoleon. So where is he? I surrender here. It might just be in your mind, but here I surrendered. Um, in the mill. Dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 da. Waterloo. There we go. <laughs> Napoleon surrendering at Waterloo. It's just Waterloo. Okay. Yeah, thought you'd get that one. Oof. Well, that's a whole session of therapy I'm looking forward to doing. Stay tuned, because coming up next, it's Lee and the Showbiz News. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we scoot over to the man who was once confused between fisting and punching, but only the once. It's Lee in the Showbiz News. I have never been back to that boxing gym again. Mm. Never. Ooh. Talking of fisting. No. Uh -huh. Let's have a little natter about Justin Bieber. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that someone you would like to be fisting or in the fisted face by? With a broken chair. No, once, once again. Again, that's punchingly. Punching, fisting. No, no, all, no fisting is. All involves more hands. Yeah. Yeah. So, we like to talk. Well, when I say we like to talk about Justin Bieber, he, he makes it so easy for us to talk about him because he's so stupid. Oh. Um, so he he has got himself a new hairdo. Got his hair in. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's he's had some dreadlocks put in. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know how we feel about white people in dreadlocks. I, I'm not a fan of cultural appropriation. Yeah. You see, that's what he's been kind of accused of. Mm. Um, so yeah, he's he's had these dreadlocks put in. So we've got a picture of him here with his dreadlocks in. He looks like a corn dolly. <laughs> he looks like a Luby Loo doll. And why is he holding his winky? Because he makes sure he's still there. Um. <laughs> it's like going, he looks like a corn dolly going, I got a winky. I got a winky. Um, so, yeah. Not he's... a tuppence. I got a winky, not a tuppence. I've got a throbbing meat sausage. Is that what we were saying, meat tube? Meat tube. Meat, meat tube. tube. Um, so yeah, so he's had these. He's had these dreadlocks put in, and has had some sort of like grief online about cultural appropriation mm. and whether it's appropriate that he should be wearing. But he doesn't care about that. Of course, he doesn't. He doesn't care because what he's done is he's put them into to buns. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he looks like a Care Bear. <laughs> 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 A very sad Care very Bear. Sad. Well, no, Care Bears now, from when they were in the 80s, so like oh. after Care Bear's been on a like, yeah. coach run. Yeah, he, so he has 175 million Instagram fans. Okay. And not a single one has said that's a good look. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so some people have kind of gone, yes, that looks good. Really? Yeah. <sighs> Most purpose. people have kind of said, no. No. Yeah. Um, you know, oh no, please stop this. Um, but can a, hair, can a hairdo be culture? Is it specifically for... See, I've always... Whenever I've seen white people mm -hmm. or European people with dreadlocks, I just think, mm, it's a bit sad. Because European white people's hair is not as thick. Mm -hmm. And it just looks a little bit scalpy. It's a bit ratty. It does, doesn't it? So it, it's not great. I mean... Um, Dreadlocks, they date back as far as 1500. Mm -hmm. So they're not like a new thing. No. They're kind of like a really sort of historical hairstyle. Um, a lot of the sort of ancient Greece um, people. Ancient Greece people? Greek. Is that, is that a <laughs> Greek people? Ancient Greek. Ancient Greek people. Um, they used to wear them. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit odd. But I kind of thought, you know, if, if, if the Beebster... Mm -hmm. Can try and pull it off. What would we look like? Well, no, because I'm bald. Well, you know, if we weren't and we could put them on, let's have a look. Here's a here's a picture of me with dread. What do you think of that? 
Hey, you're laughing at mine. Let's wait till we see yours. Let's pop yours up, Mike. Oh! Do I like that face? You like you like the face? Yeah. What about the dreads? No. You look like an eco warrior. I do. You look right. like you store your own poo. Yeah. Although I'd like Pickets. to know why, why you're taking pictures of me while I'm in my study. Nothing that can't be found on the dark web, Mike. Right. I think I think we're just going to say dreadlocks for white people. No. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Let's just not do it. Yeah. Let's not go for it. Let's, yeah. And and if someone out there wants to shave Justin Bieber. Not in a sexy way. Okay. Just as a get rid of the, the dreadlocks. <laughs> niche, niche video <laughs> there. Woo! Okay, let's, let's, let's just... Yeah, just all these sheep shearers going, well, a bit quiet at the minute, why not? <laughs> but he doesn't have any pubes. Hitting him like. on the ground, shaving him like a sheep. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, let's do some more celebrity news. Celebrities, they like their pets. No, I'm concerned already because we've, we've talked we've, about no, we've, stuff we've, esta them. we've established that they like their pets. Uh -huh. Some celebrities like to kiss their pets. Okay. In, now, in a... In a uh, not in a where? sexy... Not, no, 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 no. no, not like that. Although when we see some of the pictures, you might kind of think, ooh. So okay. I have a dog myself. You do. And I do occasionally... <laughs> Pleasure. Kiss her. <laughs> uh, kiss her on the foof? No. No, well, that's okay then. That's no. not bestiality. I don't do cunnilingus on my own dog. Okay. Other people's? But okay. Mine. okay. Um, apparently, there is a good... There's a potential good aspect of kissing your dog. Because canine germs... They contain dentistics. No. <laughs> canine germs may act as a probiotic. Scientists have said, this is one for you. This is one for your segment. So apparently, it, so it's well documented that owning a pet, a dog, can uh -huh. boost your kind of well-being, your emotional well-being. Yeah, yeah. Um, something stupid loving is brilliant. Yeah. Um, but also, it could be that actual the microbes that lurk in dogs' guts could have a probiotic effect on their owners. Okay. So I, can, when, I can see that being true because, you know, there's probiotic drinks. Yes. They get, you know how they, they get the cultures from that, don't you? Yeah, my dog loves them. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but those probiotic drinks. Yes. The, the, the culture they get from human feces. What? Yeah, you don't know that. The, the way that they get those cultures. Is somebody shitting in a tub? They, they, they wash it out, but yeah, pretty much. It, it's a healthy gut bacteria, and the only way to get that is from someone's gut, which is, yeah. And dogs eat a lot of poo, so I can believe the science. Now that's science, that is. Oh, okay. Right, so. I've just rock walked your world there. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, do you want to continue on with your little segment? Right. So, research is showing that dog owners share the same gut bacteria as their dogs. Because, the, because of the kissing that happens. <laughs> or they're all eating each other's poop. <laughs> no. They, no, I don't eat my dog's poop. Yeah, but do your dog eat your poop? No. How do you know? I, I tend to know when I'm doing a poop, and she's not around then. But you, 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 might, you might poop in your sleep and not know about it. because the dog. Oh, this is going very them. weird. I'm not, no, right, it's right. going too weird. <laughs> Anywho, right. So let's have a look at some celebrities kissing their dogs. So here we have a picture of Amanda Siegfield. Uh -huh. Okay. She was in Mamma Mia. Oh, okay. Okay. She's giving it, look, a proper tongue in, inside, her, inside her mouth from her dog. Okay. Ooh. With the furrowed brow, I don't think that was on purpose. Do you know, no, well, perhaps it just it slipped it in. Yeah. Um, we've got a picture here of Miley Cyrus. Um, She'll be all for it. That's oh, look, there yeah. she is. That dog doesn't look too happy, to be fair. It's like, run oh, away from me. Your breath stinks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> was a cute dog, though. Husky was, dog. Yeah, is it a mini husky? I think it's just a, a baby husky. A baby husky. A puppy. Yeah, puppy. Okay. We've got a picture of Neil Patrick Harris next. Ooh, that's that's a, that is full out. That's intense. open mouth. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's a yeah, yeah. That's a choice. And then this one, I think that you will appreciate. It's Tom Hardy. Now he is not kissing a dog. The dog is kissing him. Yes, I, I would quite happily be that dog right now. Yeah, yeah. It's the kind of dog that I would expect Tom Hardy to have. It looks like a pit bull or a bull mastiff, bull mastiff or something like that. So yeah, go French kiss your dogs, viewers. Or don't, because it might be a bit dirty. Okay. Oh, last bit of showbiz news. Mm -hmm. Kate Moss. Yeah. She's a model. She is. She's a supermodel. She's, she's never had a cream cake. 
Because Nothing you... tastes as good as thin feels, Mike. So obviously never had a cream cake. So, but well, she wants you to watch her sleep for money. This isn't an OnlyFans thing. Okay. Because that's where I've cornered the market. She is going to show a lucky, lucky fan uh -huh. what she's like in bed. If they pay thousands of pounds to charity. All right, okay. So it's art. It's art, sweetie. Art. And it's for charity. And it's for charity. Okay. So here's a picture of one of the, so the little videos of her sleeping. Mm. So this is the only one we could show because the rest of them have her nip hanging out. Oh, okay. Anyway, that was a purpose, you know, on purpose. But, you know. Um, so this, has, this one has, has had a bid of £11,000. Okay. Already. Hopefully that it will go up. It's for a really worthy charity. It's a mental health charity called Girls Talk. Okay. Um, but you can also, you don't have to have, you know, bid on her sleeping. You can go out, um, you can bid for her walking. Mm -hmm. Kate walking. I think we've got, we've got a picture of Kate walking. There's three Kates there. I don't okay. know if there are three Kates in existence. See, I don't think she's walking at that one. I think she's, she's twirling. Twirling. She's a model. They don't just walk, they twirl and sashay, twirl, sashay yeah. chante, okay. that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that, you know, it's, you can have that. You can have that on your computer. Mm -hmm. Can I have a box of tissues next to it? Great, yeah. Okay. It's uh, for charity, so well done. It's there. for charity, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, what would, would, you, would you pay for somebody? What would you pay to see somebody do? Let's just end it now. Yeah, yeah that's the end of the showbiz news. Yeah, well, thank you for that, Lee. After that Justin Bieber look, I'm glad I'm bald. But coming soon, we have our new segment, That Science, that is. But before that, we have Mike in the buzz. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now it's time to go over to the man who has a part-time job as a mini-me lookalikey. It's Mike with the buzz. Oh, moving on. I've been hunting around the internet, and that was hunting, um, to find some interesting things. Wow. Okay. Now, as, as we start to come out of lockdowns, yeah, um, birthday parties are a thing. So I know you've missed, like, two of your two. birthdays, right? So have you got a plan for a birthday party? Shenanigan? No, I'm, I'm having those years back. Well, I am, Mike. You am. I am. <laughs> I am. I am. I cheese sandwich. <laughs> no, I'm, I made a deal with? with the universe. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I can have those two years back. So I, essentially, You're only I am in stasis. <laughs> <laughs> Until after lockdown. Right, okay. Um, well, well, one young lad... Lad. One young lad. <laughs> One young lad um, has, had a, has his party, uh, his birthday party, and has had a Sports Direct themed birthday party at a local pub. This sounds classy. No, oh, it's very classy. So if you, you have a look, they're all in sporting gear with the big mugs and the... It looks like an advert for one of those, like, porn sites that you get in the back of magazines. What, Chav Lads Are Us? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it Scally was. Boys. Scally Boys. <laughs> Why did I get the ragged dolls theme in my head then? <laughs> Scally boys. Scally boys. Scally boys. Scally boys. Boys like you and me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not me. Or me. I'm not Scally. I'm no. not Scally, really. I'm a lady. So most of them kept things cheap and cheerful when they're going, just sort of like buying the cheapest things they could. But, but one of them, Sam, spent £80. £80? Pounds. £80 pounds to look, look like, like that. Which one is um, Sam? Which one is Sam? Guess which one spent the most money? Well, um, the, I'm going to say the one in the football kit to the far right. No, one in the middle. Not the one in the middle. One in the middle spent the most money. He spent 80 quid, what, on that? Uh-huh. Yeah. That spandex thing? That, that, that's a, a football outfit. Okay. Yes. Um, so we're, we're getting some inappropriate comments from the, from the gallery. It's just... <laughs> Can you have a cold shower, please? Thank you. So, yes. Um, so, they went out to the local pub because social distancing meant there's only those guys allowed in the pub. Right? And they basically all went out for a big party. Well done. Well done, then. But you could have a theme for your birthday. And, and no one would judge you. 
Well, I would. I'd, I'd probably go for um, like a pound land. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you say pound land, yeah. do you mean like the, th- the shop or, or a fun time, sexy time kind of thing? Welcome to Poundland. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get that for a minute. I'm thinking, what? A, like a sexy time in the shop? Ooh, yeah. Um, no, the the the, the, the shop. The Everything's brand. a pound. Yeah. Everything's a pound. Everything's a pound. Rather than the pound me land. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Rather than being pounded. Yeah. In a field. Or in a pub. That's just a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows dogging happens on Wednesday. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, so we, we had a conversation about Justin Bieber's new hair. Yeah. Yes, and how that was a bit of a tragedy. Yeah. Um, well, I've seen something worse. Worse than that? Worse than that. Um, and this is as one, one, shall we say, unfortunate lady has had to beg one of her hairdresser friends to help after an unfortunate um, look, which made her look like a lion. Is that, is that, a, is that like a wig on top of no, her own hair? No, that's her hair. That is her do, yes. So what's happened is they've, they've trimmed the top quite short and then straightened the bottom bit. Who has trimmed the top? One of her friends that's not oh, a hairdresser. Are they American? No. Oh, okay. No, they're British. That's some unusual colours going on there. Mm-hmm. Did she do that as well? Did she colour it as well? It was coloured as well and, yeah. But she was there trusting a friend, letting her do it, going, oh, this is brilliant. Thank you so much for doing my lockdown mm. hairdo. I used to have a girl's world head when I was five. I can do hairdos, me. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Didn't you have a girl's world head? <laughs> Just had a pair of scissors. Kitchen scissors. Wow. Do we have a picture of what she looks like now? Um, no. Oh, well, that's boring then, isn't it? <laughs> it looks better. Oh, it looks better. It looks okay. better. I'll, I'll Google yeah. that when I get home. Then. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, the story isn't the, the fact she had horrible hair and it got better. It's the fact she had horrible hair. No need, no need to let the viewers know. <laughs> she looks fine now. She's not. It looks nice. It looks She's fine. She's got it for a bob. She's got it for a graduated bob. It's just, just a haircut. It looks okay. <laughs> but she looks like a lion in that one. She, yes, she did. Yeah. Which From is the back. bit. Yes. Moving on to the next story. Okay. When you're making a nice romantic meal for you and other half. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're making spaghetti bolognese. Okay. And you have to do the washing up afterwards. Okay. Don't you hate having to wash the pan up? Ooh, it's a chore, Mike. It's awful. Well, the good news is that one lady in America has found a great way of making spaghetti bolognese without a pan. How? How? By mixing it on her countertop. Oh. Okay. So what she does is she pours out the cold tomato sauce. Cold? Cold tomato sauce. Okay. Right. And adds cold meatballs that are already prepared that you've bought. And adds right. cold cheese. And then boils spaghetti in a pan. And then pours it on top and mixes it together. Dirty bit. Yeah. <laughs> on, a, on a marble worktop. Now, if anyone's got a marble worktop, you do not put tomato sauce on marble because it stains. Stains it, yeah. doesn't it? Mm. Right, and so I thought this is a brilliant way of dealing with with the. Um... How, do, how does she mix it all together with her tits? <laughs> yes, she uses a breast. No, she doesn't. Um, she just mixes it with with a, a spatula. With a spatula. Yeah, okay. yeah. But the the whole purpose is that she's doing it to so she doesn't have to do the washing up afterwards. Well, she's gonna have to wash a surface, isn't she? She's gonna have to wash the pan that she boils the hot pasta yeah, pasta with. So stupid, it just doesn't work. work. Doesn't work. Right, and I think that. For once, the internet agrees with me. Did they mock her? They mocked her relentlessly. Um, with one person saying, I'm tired of people wasting food like this for social media attention. Harsh. Which is true. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then someone else saying, she saved a pan and murdered Italian cuisine. Oh, R.I.P. Yeah, so people really not impressed with her. What does she... Does it, what, right, so once she's made it... Uh-huh. And it's just there on the surface... She scoops it up and puts it on plates. Oh, right, she's like... Go sweet, and a family come running and they go <laughs> on the table and then go, then leave. I come and do what? What did they do? Sweet. Uh, that's the sound that. People... Okay, and then they run in and do what? They run in. Yeah. And go <laughs> like that. Okay. And if you'd like, if you'd like to buy a video of Lee doing that on loop, um, link will be on screen later. Um, it won't. It's just weird. So yeah. Not a great way of, of cooking of uh, cooking bolognese. Silly lady. Yeah, silly, wasteful. Not silly, good. It's not big, it's not clever, and, you, and you've not brought attention to yourself. No. In a good way. No. Exactly. 
And if you've got something to show us, oh, and Maureen from Moldova, that's either very impressive or slightly scary. We're not sure which, but the rest of you can give us a tag or mention on our social media. Just look for at the could TV. And that brings us to our story of the week. OK, now you've been known to work with children in a professional capacity. I have indeed, man. Yeah, why did you laugh at that? That's, that's I la I, 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 <laughs> you added that in a professional capacity. That was very important point. It was, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Do parents ever come to you? I'm concerned. <laughs> what was that? I have never had a parent come on me, Mike. Uh, to you? To me, no. Yes. I'm concerned about what their child is reading. Occasionally. Occasionally. Mm. Uh, well, parents have been left divided over Ooh. a new book. Um, which is called Where Willie Went. Okay. And this is the, the big story of a little sperm. And it's an educational book um, designed to, to give younger children the idea about the birds and the bees from a young age to, to educate. Ejaculations. Well, not just ejaculations, but, but the whole miracle of creation, shall we the say. The miracle of creation. Yes, of, of, of progeny. Yes. <laughs> is it when a mummy and daddy love each other very, very much? Yes. And they have a special cuddle. Yes. And then the dad shafts the woman to within an inch of her life. So mm -hmm. she goes, ah! Or, or, or daddy's friend Bernard comes in and shafts his mother, and that's called a cuckold. Yes. Yes. Um, or that two daddies love each other very much and have lots and lots and lots of sex. But they don't have um, babies. Or have babies. Or two, two mummies love each other very, very much and have lots and lots and lots of sex and still don't have any babies. Um, no. But they, but they practice. But they practice, so it's fine. Um, the reason why this has divided parents, because it's, it's been a bit graphical. Okay. So, for instance, um, it's brutally honest. So, inside Mr. Brown is where he lived, just here. So, Willie the sperm. Oh, okay. Lived inside Mr. Brown. Okay. Right. right. And it shows literally where he lived. Inside Mr. Brown. Yeah, in his testicle. It's testicles, very small testicles there, well, it's Mr. Probably, Brown. It might be cold for Mr. Brown. Sad time. He, he stood out there in the middle of, of, of a of the blue ocean, it looks like. <laughs> yes, it's a very clear sky, probably in the middle of December. It'd be chilly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but that, that's caused, obviously, controversy. But that's all from the buzz this week. Well, thanks, Mike. That, that was informative and gratifying. Coming up, we have that science, that is. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. He has prepared his special area, ready for this week's. That science, that is. So today we're going to be learning about DNA. Say that your dicky bow is very attractive. You're liking my yellow dicky. Yes. yes, it's yellow, which means it's septic. That's nice. So, so have you ever wondered what what DNA looks like? No, but I'm going to say yes. <laughs> that will be the end of the thing. There. <laughs> yes. Well, because even if you say no, you're going to learn today. <laughs> so we're going to see the the DNA from strawberries, which is why you've got strawberries. Do they contain? DNA? Everything contains DNA. Everything? Everything. Well, every living thing. Every living yeah. thing. Um, stones, not so much. Living things. So what we're going to do, we're going to take one of your strawberries. You can pick which one you want to, to get the DNA from. I'm going to pick the large one. And you may eat the other two. Ooh. So <laughs> just, have you dipped them in anything? They're, they're, they're just strawberries. You eat one. Yeah. Okay. To prove you've not poisoned it. Mmm. Just proves I've not poisoned mine. So you should have a Ziploc bag. I do, Michael. And what you want... <coughs> so you want to pop your strawberry into a Ziploc bag. Do I need to take the green thing off first? You don't need to, no. Oh, OK. Yeah, but it's not for presentation. And then you zip up your Ziploc bag. And then gently, but firmly, squish the strawberry. Oh. Are we making a smoothie? Sort of. We're, we're breaking open cells. Oh, 
You having fun? Mmm, it feels delicious. It feels delicious. It feels m- moist. Yeah. It feels moist. Yeah. It should do. We're squishing up the strawberry. You just need to keep squishing it. I'll keep squishing it. You need it. to keep squishing it until it's as smooth as possible. Until it's a paste. Almost a paste, yeah. And if you want to, you can lay it down and, and flatten it and squish it that way as well. Yeah, but what you don't want to do is beat it up too much. So you don't want to shake it and things like that. You just oh. want to squish. Are we making jam? We're not making jam. We're, we're getting the DNA out of the cells. Because as I was saying before, everything contains DNA. Every living thing contains DNA. Every living. Even some of your favourite celebrities. Well, that is questionable. Yeah, well, Paige Morgan, maybe not. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Once, once you've squished that up and you've got a, a nice smoothish paste. Yeah. Okay. We need to keep breaking the cells open. Do we? Okay. We do. You can't just leave it like that. That's not that contains DNA, but you can't separate it out. No. No. So what we, we need to use some chemical solvents. Oh. Oh, solvents. Solvents. Right. Um. So in, open up your Ziploc bag. Okay. And into that, we're going to put a little bit of normal table salt. Yeah? I am doing that, indeed. Just a little bit. Are you sure that's table salt, not sugar? It's it's table salt. It's... Chemical name is sodium chloride. Okay? Now, cells have actually got collagen in them. And fat. Okay? Um, sorry, cholesterol and fat. Um... So what you need to do is you need to break up the fattiness as well. Now, washing up liquid is the perfect thing to do that. So we're going to add a little bit of washing up liquid to it as well. So if I drink washing up liquid tomorrow morning, I'll be thin? No. Well, it'll be very, very poorly. Very poorly. Do not drink washing up liquid, people. Right. How much washing up liquid do I put in my... Just a little drizzle. Ooh. That's enough. Oh. Just a little, not a lot. Yeah. Okay. And then we need a touch of water as well. Just a little bit of water. Agua. Just a little bit, just a hydrogen and oxygen mixed together. There we go. And then zip it back up. And then gently, because you want no foam. No foam. No foam. No foam. You're going to mix that by by, by caressing. Okay. Just by caressing it, we're going to mix it together. Yeah, yeah, baby, yeah. And you need to do this for a, for a good few minutes okay, oh. for the chemicals to, to work. So, what we do, just want uh, some facts about DNA. Please! If you took all of the DNA out of your body and laid it end to end, you'd be dead. Really? Yeah. Can oh. we extract DNA from fossils and create dinosaurs like what they do in Jurassic Park. No. Can't. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so the reason for that is because um, DNA has got a half-life, okay, which means it, it dissolves and degrades and stops working. Oh. Decay is the word I was looking for there. Use lots of Ds, not the right one. That's the story. Um, so it, it decays and so it's not usable. And to be able to clone things, you don't need DNA. What do you need, Mike? You need RNA. What's that? Which is like half a strand of DNA. Oh. Okay. 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 Is it jizz? Yes. It is, it is jizz. Uh, it's jizz is, is, it's, it's jizz semen. Is, uh, yes. Jizz is RNA. Yeah. The, the, or the ribonucleic of acid. Life itself. Also known. Yes. Life juice. Okay. I think we, we've squished quite enough there. It's okay. a pretty colour. It's a pretty co- It's a strawberry colour. It's almost like we've been crushing up a strawberry. So now what we need to do is we need to remove some of the liquid and solids. Oh, okay. okay. So in your big jar. Yeah, My mason jar. Your mason jar. And you should have some kitchen roll. I do. What a okay. shocker. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically strain, not yourself, the um the the strawberry juices through the through the muslin or toilet roll. Kitchen oh, roll. It's very exciting, isn't it? It, it is. is very exciting. Right to... Just pour it in. Just pop it in. I do like saying Ziploc bag and I don't know why. 
I don't know either, Mike. Yeah, it's just that's its fine thing to say. It's perhaps it's perhaps it's best that we never know. Yes, and now you need to squeeze the juice out so you get the liquid out. But once again, gently. Is this what they actually do in real, real laboratory? Well, they actually use a centrifuge, which is a spinning thing. And it spins very, very quickly. And the gravity makes all the solid things go to the bottom and the liquid things go to the top. Once you've got some fluid, yeah? I've got lots of fluid. You've got lots of fluid. Oh, good. You may discard your, well, your now jammy rag. And now carefully, we have to be very careful with this bit. We have to add the purple liquid, which is methylated spirit. Okay, now what we need to do is make it so that it doesn't mix in together completely. Why don't you demonstrate So to demonstrate that, what we need to do is we need to tip the jar and slowly dribble it in. All of it? Quite a bit. I mean, you call this methylated spirits. Mm -hmm. I call this Friday night cocktails. Well, you shouldn't ever drink methylated spirits <laughs> because it, it contains... Um, Things that will make you go blind. Okay, so methanol, main thing. So if you got, so you should now have some purple fluid and some red fluid that aren't mixed together. I do, Mike. Indeed, Good. lovely. And now, if you look at it, you'll start to see what what the viewers won't be able to see at home at the moment because it's not. But as it as it as it goes, you'll start to see a white layer appear here. Yeah. You'll start to see appearing some, some white foamy stuff. Yeah. Yeah? That's actually DNA separating out. <sighs> Is that life? Um, well, it's life that we've doused in, in salt and alcohol. <gasps> so it's life like me. <laughs> um, okay, and then once you start to see a big clumpy bit, you can retrieve some with a spoon. You should have a spoon. You're just looking at it like it's a, a fish. Well, it looks like a little thing. It looks like a frog. Yeah, it will do. Shape of a frog. Yeah, yeah it will do. <gasps> well, here we go. Finding it hard to get my delicate hands inside the jar. <laughs> That's okay. But here we go. See? So, yeah, so you start to get little clumps of DNA like this. And you see a little strandy thing. Lee? You see a little <coughs> strandy thing here? Oh. That's actually a strand of DNA. Wow. That's amazing. That's science, that is. That's science, that is. I'm impressed that contained no bodily fluids. Well done, you. I still have no idea why. That's just about the end of the show for this week, but we have just enough time to remind you that we are on the CUD TV on social media, the CUD.TV for our website, and while you're on the website, have a look at the support section for exclusive clips, including outtakes. Well, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>